Hi, everybody. Uh, well, a quick word of welcome from the start. Uh, and since you are such a large and diverse crowd, we thought that also a large and diverse crowd should welcome you. So you are getting the three of us. Uh, my name is Filippo Cavassini. I'm, the, I'm a student here at HKS in the MPT program. And I'm the vice president for HKS of the Italian <coughs> Society at Harvard, which is one of the organizers of this event. And my co so my name is Francesco Bronci, I'm an MBA student and uh, co-chairman of the Italian Society. Hi, I'm Paola Sturla, I'm a student at the Harvard Graduate School of Design and I'm vice president of the Italian Society. And uh, so welcome on the ALP on the co-sponsors of this event, the Cal Center for Human Rights at the Harvard Kennedy School, the Consulate General of Italy in Boston, in Boston and the Consul General Livorio Cellino, who is here today, the Italian Society at Harvard Kennedy School, and the Harvard Kennedy School of uh, Student Government. Working together has been, at first, a great learning opportunity, and also fun. And we hope that there will be many other occasions for this organization to work together in the future, even if some of us will not be here next, the next year. So the Italian Society was recently born to create and foster collaboration among Italian students and not only Italians, but just everybody interested in uh, Italian speakers or you know, Italian-loving people. And uh, we're really excited about having you know, such, a, such a very cool, can I say, speaker. <laughs> and, and, uh, and I would just like to thank all of those that made this possible. So for sure, the Consul, Livorio Stellino, has been really supportive of our initiative here at Harvard, but also ISNA, also the European clubs from the Harvard Kennedy School and the Harvard Business School, uh, also our friends from Italy, which helped us uh, a lot in coordinating, promoting, and organizing some of the events this year. And we just hope to continue this collaboration even in the future, even as some of us are graduating, and uh, we'll, we'll keep cheering for the Italian society. Very last stretch, I promise. Uh, so, just uh, a quick word of uh, thanks for the for the for the for the office of the Italian Society, who really put a lot of work uh, and effort into, into this event, all the other events we organized this year. In particular, I would like to recognize Chiara Superti and uh, and Luigi Patruno from JSAS, uh, Alessandro Gennarino uh, from uh, the Law School, um, Sergio della Zassa from H HBS. Uh, all together, they did a terrific job, and uh, we are grateful uh, to them. Uh, and now, uh, to attend our business today, uh, well, first of all, we, since we have thanked so many people, we would also like to thank Andrea Rossi, uh, Marco, and uh, our distinguished guests uh, for being here. Um, and uh, Andrea will do a far better job than I can introducing uh, our, our guest. Uh, maybe a quick word of introduction for Andrea, uh, who, is, uh, who is a development economist, uh, and uh, uh, he has a very long experience on working development uh, for the UN. And here uh, at Harvard, is a director for the program on measurement and human rights at the Carr Center for Human Rights. What he does, I think, is extremely cool, so we are very much uh, in line with our best today. Basically, this is a new area of research. It's basically applying analytical tools to, uh, to human rights, human rights policies, to design uh, evidence-based policies, which hopefully are uh, more effective during this presentation. Uh, and, uh, and I think that in that very spirit, just to spread the surface and see what is behind the relationship between music and human rights, we organize this event. Uh, and now to start to scratch the surface a little bit more to Andrea. Thank you. Thank you. So welcome to the Harvard Kennedy School. I don't know how many of you are students here. I hope a lot. Uh, <laughs> It's a, a real pleasure for me to organize this uh, quite unusual but interesting event. And uh, I will try to be as brief as possible so we can talk with uh, uh, Lorenzo Rubini Giovanotti. How can I call you? Or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it, okay. Uh, we will, it 
it's, it's uh, interesting for us. As I say, I do statistics. I don't do music. So I know it's much boring than doing music. But it's a way for us to talk about human rights in an area that actually people probably don't are used to, uh, to listen to us. Um, we will, you are three of us, as you can see, uh, Lorenzo, uh, there's a singer, music writer, rapper, activist, <coughs> uh, it's him. And Marco, who is a, a colleague uh, from uh, PRI, a journalist, uh, with a long, uh, incredible experience on music uh, and uh, news. Is, uh, would recognize his voice later when he's uh, speaking, probably, than he's not famous than his face. Uh, <laughs> we will start immediately uh, with uh, uh, two things, just to come here. Uh, when we talk about music and human rights, we just put some uh, some uh, examples here. Uh, it's not something new. We got from Beethoven in Ninth Symphony on talking about uh, freedom of people. Which unfortunately, we can play other uh, old videos, but they, can, they cannot go over here. Uh, the uh, the class from nationalism. A lot of nationalism talk about rights and move people. Uh, we have uh, Bob Marley, actually we did a survey, as I hope uh, most of you did, and we found that Bob Marley was one of the most uh, uh, voted singer linked with human rights, together with uh, actually We Shall, we shall Over Time, in this case, singing by John Bites. It's quite interesting, probably was the most voted uh, song, and uh, we almost unknown singer. Um, ending up to uh, hip-hop music here in the United States, but also uh, around the world, the video we had over there is actually from Tanzania, where we have a Maasai hip hop. It's a way to transform hip hop tradition into local, not only local language, but actually local culture. Um, songs and human rights are not just songs, it's also about action. We just put some uh, information here about the songs, the concert. Uh, starting from Live Aid, probably the concert will change everything, uh, as Lorenzo uh, said before. Um, to uh, the last concert for Haiti uh, that was, uh, was just done. Uh, but musicians don't simply, so they don't do just songs, they don't do concerts. Recently, musicians have started playing the role and discussing with policymakers. And we, here we are at the Kennedy School of Rome. When we have uh, singers talking with president of state, prime ministers, negotiating and discussing important issues such as the reduction of debt, the fight against poverty and commitment. Remembering policy, make, policy makers, they, uh, the commitment they did in the past. But it's also about money and it's also about power. The live aid is estimated, unfortunately we don't have an official figures, uh, and this is also not a problem, that raised 150 million of British pounds. That is more or less 2% of GDP of Ethiopia. So it's like Giovanotti coming here to the United States, bringing a check of the 2% of the United States GDP. That will make him quite powerful. And finally, the interesting is about the commitment and the action. This is the result of the survey we did among the more than 400 people that answered. And I hope most of you are here. When we asked, if you give money for a human rights cause, have you ever follow up how the money were used? And actually, surprisingly, 78% of the people responded, no, I didn't try. It's a little discouraging for a person like me that does impact assessment and want to prove how the money are spent. But it also is something that we have to talk about. How much music is moving people and for what? And with this one, I think, we can start the discussion, giving the floor to Marco. Thank you very much. And thank you all for coming out tonight. I should uh, warn Lorenzo that uh, we only have 40 or 50 minutes to talk. And I interviewed you last summer, and I rarely do an interview with a guest that lasts for more than an hour, and I was like an hour and 40 minutes on tape, so you have to pace yourself, my friend. Um, <laughs> uh, so I, I guess we, we uh, would like to know why you uh, will be speaking about human rights and music. Um, and I guess, you know, my own, my own relationship with you began in another lifetime when I was much younger and studying Italian in Rome and the teacher brought out a uh, 
copy of Pencil Positivo, and that was our lesson for the day. So, it, you know, it, this means a lot to me to be here. Um, uh, and I guess what I would like to know, first of all, is how you got to... You, you recently performed a concert in Cuba. Yes. And I'd like to use that as a starting point for what you're interested in, in human rights is, and, and music, and this kind of intersection. This was um, uh, the Colombian singer Juanes staged a concert, uh, what, two months ago? January. Oh, was that one ago? Last year. Yeah, last year. Um, so, uh, big concert was called Concierto Paz Sin Fronteras. Peace without frontiers. Why did you play? What did it mean to you to be there? Why was it important to you to go? And what was the message that you were sending? So, we started with Cuba, yeah. Who was the fantastic? Mike. Okay. Oh, you hear me? No. no. That's on the back. I'm not used to microphones. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Right now. Okay. Yes. Good. So good evening, everybody. I'm very honored to be here and uh, honored to accept your beautiful invitation. Uh, I'll do my best, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm a singer, I'm a musician, so I, I prefer when I have a, a drum beat. Uh, under my, my speech, but I'll, I'll, do my, I'll do my best to say. Um, I, I've been to Cuba on the 21st of September last year because uh, one has invited me because uh, we, we knew each other um, and we, we spoke a lot in, uh, in our uh, the locations where, where we met. And I, I follow Cuba issues in the, in the last year as a personal interest and also because when I, I, I was there for the first time in 92, and I was there just for uh, traveling curiosity, you know, because I wanted to see a place that when I was a child uh, were always on television, uh, in the news, uh, this war, Cuba, you know, Cuba was a key place. And so when I was a child with my family watching the news and on television, this war, Cuba was interesting, you know, was always, and it's also a nice war. And I am a musician, so I'm attracted by the beauty and the curiosity of the world. And so I wanted to see what Cuba was because, you know, Che Guevara legend, the, 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 the revolution, you know, all this kind of stuff got a fascination, you know, in a young, young, young mind. So I went there, and what I discovered was that the young people in Cuba were listening to my music. And they don't have a real music market, actually. They don't have records, they don't have record shop, you know, they cannot actually, especially in 92, in they, they, there was no, there is no internet now. Saying in Cuba is, is quite difficult. I didn't have to do there was nothing, you know. But uh, in some ways, my, my, some of my songs, uh, they were popular. And so I started thinking, you know, I uh, fell in uh, a, a relationship with this island. And at the end of the day, my question was, uh, why, you know, uh, an Italian guy can have the access of all concepts, of all kind of information, of all kind of, and in Cuba, it's got to be like a, it is like a challenge. You know, for a young guy to get in touch with one song, that two. it's like uh, something that, lived, uh, that uh, uh, exists uh, in, in the underground, you know. Uh, and so I always uh, thought that the power of music, especially the power of pop music, especially the power, in particular, the power of uh, the music that uh, is not is not talking about peace and about. Uh, the end of the war and about human rights. But the music that is talking maybe just about kisses and about dancing and about uh, uh, having an ice cream together with your girlfriend in a bar. That music is maybe concerning the human rights promotion the most powerful music because uh, it promotes a sense of freedom that is connected with freedom of being of expressing yourself as a human being. And so it comes before knowledge. It has, as another kind of knowledge. It's an emotional knowledge. It's not the knowledge of laws, of, uh, of statues, you know what, 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 what I mean. Uh, it's a knowledge, it's a body knowledge, you know, and that's a very important one. And so, uh, with Juan S, when Juan S called me to in, invite him, I was honored because uh, I was going there not uh, uh, being uh, an activist, but being more than an activist, being an artist. So being somebody that brings a value 
in his activity. And the value of being an artist is the value of freedom of expression, is the value of uh, being free of telling what you feel to anybody. Uh, in a place where don't even exist a market for my music, I think it was a good reason to go to take a music where there is not a market, but it, there is the desire for music. And uh, the desire comes before the market. The desire is the right to desire. It's a right, it's a human right, the right to desire. And so if somebody desires music and I can give that in my music to them, I think uh, it's something that uh, for me is beautiful to do. And it's a part of my path as a human being uh, towards what uh, with a uh, ambiguous world that we can call a better world. A world with more freedom, a world with more knowledge, a world with more chances for, uh, for everybody uh, and more respect for uh, the desires of young people, for the issues, and, and that's it. And, uh, what, what did you feel was the message coming out of that concert? When you got up on stage in Havana, yeah, and the, the message was, you're going to have this image that you're singing to the United States, yeah. and there's some message there. The message was joy. The first message was joy. And uh, the secondary message was that uh, uh, there's only one way to solve, uh, to, to develop the Cuba situation in relationship with the world, and this way is uh, uh, going... Uh, Superare, you say in, in Italian, super, in English, superare, overcome, mm. overcome hate, overcome reasonable uh, hate that there are, you know, because there are a simple reason why a Cuban exiled of uh, 75 years old is very angry with the you know? Pebo Valdez? Sorry? Pebo Valdez? Everybody, you know, all the, I think there is a generation of people coming out from Cuba after the revolution that are serious uh, risks mm. to be accepted. They were killed people, there were uh, uh, not fair trials, a lot of things. No? But the only way to uh, overcome this uh, is passing through a new generation of values and a new generation also of people, or human beings. They have to, and, and for to do this, we got to create a, uh, Occasion uh, is the right occasion. Occasion, opportunities, sorry, of uh, party, of being together, of uh, feeling the same feeling, of participating to a uh, event of made of sensuality, made of speech, made of uh, dancing. Uh, together with artists that in your country, like Cuba, you cannot even think to have in contact in your place because you think that it's like impossible because it's artists, you think that they live in a sort of market. Uh, that's it, that was the reason. I, I, I think that anywhere I can go to take my music, for me, is a, is a big opportunity. Uh, I do music because I think that music has this power of, of free your soul, of free your body, of free your mind. You know? I do this, that's my talent, that's what I, I, I like to do. And the, the idea that I cannot do this somewhere, and somewhere, yes, is the idea that, uh, uh, that worries me. So this may be jumping the gun, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Do you think that, I mean, you, your point of view is pretty evolved. It's pretty nuanced. And I'm wondering, do politicians get that? I'm also wondering, um, what was I wondering? I just had another tip of my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you think that that point of view is actually more subversive than getting on a stage and singing, you know, down with the government, or yeah. we hate, you know, such and such. I think, things. yeah, I think, I think, I don't know, it's, you know, it's not, it's, it's more, I, 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 I would say, what's the it evolved, nuanced, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know that, I think that it's more modern, and uh, it, it's more uh, synchronized with the uh, zeitgeist that uh, we're living in, you know, with uh, the spirit of the time that we're living in. The, the things have changed, they, they change a lot, you know, I, I am a new generation compared to the generation that maybe invented the prophet song and talking about the, our godfathers, you know, and what the people who is on the screen. Yeah, you know, people, 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 I don't know, 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 I
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not joking. We got this, you know. It, it makes a difference. Yeah. It makes a difference. Uh, everybody is a media today. Um, the, I think that the, the um, models of behavior of young people today are not more are no more pure moral knights, you know, cavalier. Um, there is a more com is a more complex the way that the young people relate themselves to their uh, moral uh, models, you know, to their um, aesthetic also uh, models. They, it changed a lot since, since the past. And today, what's happening is that. Uh, uh, we gotta uh, we gotta move from uh, uh, a question of being protesting with your music to a question between uh, of being uh, involved with your activity in uh, make your your hands dirty, you know, with compromise. With this kind of stuff that is always been seen as the contrary of doing my job, you know, but. Uh, it's a necessity, it's a necessity, you know. Uh, if you do protest music and if you do like music against everything, at the end uh, it's more easy and comfortable because uh, you, you ride the legend and the myth of rock as a rebel music, of rock as the music against power, you know. And that, that myth, that legend is very strong. And it's also true because uh, it has a reason. But the, I think that uh, moving to an activism made of uh, also accepting to sit down with a politician and to talk about what, what to do is uh, not uh, renouncing to the rebellious power of music, but uh, doing, uh, doing like a, a, a step forward in that, you know. It's a risk for us, for, for an artist. It's, a, it's an image because uh, we think that people like us more when we are more, you know, pure and hard, you know. And so it's not beautiful when I see me in, in front of, together with uh, the Prime Minister. I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, I can say, in you know? so, so you feel like those encounters are necessary, but you don't particularly like them? But you cannot like them because I do another job. Because uh, I am, I, I, go to I, don't, mean, I don't. I like the particular say, politician, but those those meetings. I think they, 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 they are, are useful. useful. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I believe in that. I believe that they are useful. When I get out from the office of Massimo D'Alema with Bono, uh, we knew one one thing. We knew that uh, in uh, six months we obtained that uh, 20 million African child that they were going to school. Uh, thanks also to that, uh, to that thing. Because politicians, they want more than everything, they want, they want one thing. They want to be not by me. They want to be voted and they want to be the, the people they, they want the people that like them. You know, I, I said, they want to be not. And if we give them a, sh a little chance to be loved and we get back from them some billions to, uh, to let the children go to school, I think it's a good compromise. <laughs> uh, let, let's go back to... I'd like to go back to when we saw a picture of Bob Geldof at Live Aid in uh, 1982, I think it was. Um, sorry, 84. Um, uh, on the screen, uh, well, I think it was 13 July 1985. 85. Um, you were what, 18, 19 at the time? I was uh, 18, uh, quasi 19. Yeah. What, what, <laughs> and at the same time, you were, you know, a few years later, you had uh, a, a, a qui, uh, a festa, party man, and over the years, you've had all these concerns grow environmentalism, ecology, erasing the debt, projects with Bono. So talk about the influence of Live Aid on yeah. your whole kind of your future and, and where you ended up and your point of view today. I think li Live Aid was for my generation, for me, I'm not talking for a generation, you know, because we, I, I don't even know what that means. I thought for me. 
Live Aid was uh, a big bang, was uh, the creation of a world, was the most influencing event, musical event of my youth. Uh, I'm sure about that. I'm sure about that. I remember, I call it like a 11 September in reverse. You know what I mean? Uh, it's the kind of event uh, that uh, is the specular uh, of a tragedy, but on the other side. It's a building, it's an event that in one shot gives you the idea of, this, of, of a better world, of, a, of, a, of evolution. You know? And I was, um, I was a DJ in clubs, so I was in love with music. And I was crazy for hip hop and funk and all this kind of stuff. And, um, and I follow all the, the, the live uh, uh, on TV of, of Live Aid. And when there was this uh, exhibition uh, of um, YouTube, with the uh, on stage of Wembley Arena, or Wembley Stadium, I cried. Uh, and I still have uh, goosebumps, uh, I say goosebumps, mm -hmm. when, I, when I think about it. It was a, a key moment. What, what made you cry? Were you watching this on TV in Italy? Yeah, death. Yeah. You know? Death. Because uh, it was a sensation, you know? I, 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 it was not reasonable. I don't know why. I don't know why. But uh, this idea of uh, a world where uh, the distances uh, doesn't have, don't have sense anymore, you know, where you can do something for somebody else who's uh, asking for your help and you don't even know what, what face he has, you know. It's an idea that is strictly connected, I think, for my, with my primal emotions in my life. Because uh, I, uh, I was born in 66 and uh, People born in 66 are the first generation in the world that they, they have seen a photo of the planet uh, that, uh, shot uh, by the, by, from the outside. And uh, I think uh, that photo is one of the most important images of all time. Uh, you know, there's a funny story about that. You know that that photo was shot in 66, but the American government kept the photo secret for two years. Because they were afraid, there was a debate in the government uh, uh, between NASA. They were afraid of showing it because they were thinking about the consequences to be um, weakening the the power of the of the Western world, of the West, Western values. And there was an, a, a professor, an intellectual, who still active in very in, in ecology. I don't remember the name now, who made a campaign to liberate this photo. And in 68, they uh, showed this photo to the world. And for the first time, now we, we think that, you know, we saw it. So it's like, it's like that from, from, from the beginning of time. Well, for the first time in 68, we saw the picture of the world from outside. And when you see the picture from the world from outside, you see the picture of a small planet, of a small blue planet, silent, it's silent from the outside. It's like. Uh, they're also tender, in a way, you know. And uh, that image was very strong for, uh, in a, I think, from in an unconscious point of view. Uh, and you have to consider also that I was born in Rome, in a Catholic family. And the, if there is, uh, there are a lot of bad things in Catholicism, but there are a few good things. Uh, <laughs> one, but they are very good. Uh, there are two, but the, they superate the, the, more than the others. One very good thing in Catholicism is that uh, the uh, men are, are your brothers and your sisters. You know? uh, and this is something that you learn about when you're very young. You learn uh, in the church, you know, reading uh, with the priest, the state of the um, You learn that, uh, and in Rome, it, for me, I was born in Rome and my father was working in Vatican City with the Pope. So, my experience as a child was actually of a world of people coming in pilgrimage from all over the world in that place. So my vision is really strong. And when I saw Live Aid, I said, you know, I do music and I can, I can do this with my job. You know, that's fantastic. That's the best, you know. Music has this power more than the Pope. You know? In fact, in Cuba, we made 1,400,000 people, and we hope we made 600,000. <laughs> 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 the music, you know, and so uh, from there, from Live Aid, actually,
actually I I get in, I got in contact with some information, key information that I didn't know uh, about Africa, about uh, hunger in Africa, about starvation, and uh, and after that, after Live Aid, there were there was also you remember all the activism for the, the end of apartheid in South Africa. There was another important thing, uh, the, uh, the liberation of Nelson Mandela. All this kind of stuff was music had played an important role, a key role in, in the musicians played a key role. I was not involved, but uh, as a spectator, it was very interesting for me. The way you make it sound, uh, it, it's really easy to get sentimental about music and what it can yeah. do and its power. It's you know, it's it's right. You gotta be sentimental about music. Right. But on the other hand, we just saw this incredible pie chart where, you know, money that was given through various musical charities and benefits, 75% of the people didn't really follow up on where it went. And we just heard this report. Uh, what's that? Yeah, yeah. right. People have to hear, you know, pretty well healed, I imagine. Um, send the money off, and where it goes, it goes. And the BBC has a report recently that, you know, Live Aid money went to buy guns. Bob Gelbop denies it. But there is a disconnect between what you sing about, not you necessarily, specifically, but you know, musicians, and creating that awareness that sticks. How do you get those yeah. number, how do you get that number down where people are really concerned and it's a long-term engagement? I think that you know reality is a complex thing. You know? um, and you cannot control the consequences of uh, what you do, especially when Something you do as a, is very powerful and very big. It's quite impossible to control uh, the consequences of an explosion. A bad explosion that creates death and a good explosion is is the, is, is the same as an explosion. <coughs> and so uh, you may explode one thing because you think that it's good and right, but you cannot control all the consequences of that. It's hard to do. It. Uh, it's very possible, maybe, but. Uh, I think that uh, the value of uh, Live Aid, for instance, is uh, much more stronger than uh, the bad consequences if there, are, there have been bad consequences. Uh, Africa is a complex continent. Uh, everywhere is complex. But today, things are changing a lot. I think that uh, we are in front of a real uh, new uh, era of communication. And so in the future it will be much more easy to follow the consequences of the things because of the of the technology actually. Because of the of the democracy is going to evolve more and more to a day by day democracy. I think uh, in the future we're not going just uh, we're not going to get involved in politics just when we go to vote. We are always involved in uh, in, in choosing uh, and so it would be maybe in the future would be more easy to control the consequences of, of this kind of stuff. Anyway, uh, I got to be positive because uh, being positive permits you to do things also if uh, part of the things you do don't go wrong. But part of the things you do go right. And for me, count more than the, the part of the things you do go wrong. You know that, uh, and there is another uh, reason, I think that for me, I, 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 as a, when I like an artist, I trust him. Uh, maybe I'm wrong, mm. but I always prefer to trust somebody and make a mistake than stop it before and not trust him. Mm. Uh, it's, a, it's a vision of life. You know, uh, if there's somebody who gives me, give me some emotion, gives me something, my natural uh, approach uh, is to trust him. Then if we, if we behave in a wrong way, it's the, the, the secondary, I will move my, 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 my idea of him in the second time, you know, but my first idea is that. And so we cannot criticize people because people give money to us. Also, if a part of this money went wrong, you cannot be, you cannot tell people don't, don't give money. Then I was telling you before, there are, there are the, this topic is very, it's very big and complex, and so there are also my, I'm, I'm not totally positive 
in, in my experience about uh, uh, involvement in the promotion of human rights or, or involvement in this kind of issues like, uh, yeah, like aid or um, the one that you showed, or so emergency or um, constantly, constantly, you know, I'm not totally, I'm not like, uh, uh, in Italy we say, in Cavaliere senza matte e senza paura. I got a lot of doubts. I got, I got a lot of things that are not clear to me. There are a lot of them that right? we can talk about. Do you, do you think that maybe, I mean, songwriting is a lot like journalism, and you're telling a story, um, and it's a kind of subtle education. Do you think that maybe songs, either yours or anybody's, need to be kind of more pointed, really kind of like bringing people no, to I'm the sorry, water to drink? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but I don't agree about the fact that music is like journalism. You know, music is, a, is the contrary of journalism. Music, uh, uh, journalism, we have to tell you the truth. Uh, music, no, it's not necessary. Uh, music, uh, if I tell you, I love you, I will love you forever, maybe it's not the truth. But it's the uh, why did you write uh, in an article? Uh, but, it, but in a lot of countries around the world, in some of the countries, no, no, all right, right, I, I mean, the, 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 the musicians, the musicians <laughs> are the, they are the journalists. I mean, Fela Kuti, he was the only, yeah, he was the only one. <laughs> you know, what I believe is uh, that uh, a song is powerful when it's a good song. It doesn't depend on uh, what it's dealing with. A good song is a good song. You can have a very good political song and a very bad political song. You can have a very good love song and a very bad love song. So it's not a question of what you say in a song. Give, give us an example of a good political song and a bad political song. <laughs> no, the fact they forget it. You know, the, good thing about, the, good, good thing about music, the good thing about music is that you forget the, the, the bad. And uh, the, the, the good is right. So there are a lot of them, you know, I can, uh, there are a lot of them. I know. The, the, the best of them are the, the, um, the, the more poetic, like, uh, I don't know, one, by the two. Or, uh, you know, Bob Marley has a lot of them. Or Bob but what I think, uh, I, I make an example, no? I always think about, uh, let's say two songs on the same uh, author, no? uh, Imagine and uh, Christian Schaub. Okay. What I think, uh, it's a personal opinion, no? it's not uh, the law, uh, is that Christian Schaub is much more stronger in the promotion of human rights than Imagine. Because Imagine is uh, talking about the imagination of uh, that world that the song is talking about. This is how is uh, uh, realizzare, realizza, are you saying it's realization? It's realizing mm -hmm. that world in the moment that you hear it. In the moment that you hear it, you feel your body more enhanced, you feel more vital, you feel more free, you feel more yourself, you feel that you want to dance, that you want to hug a girl, that you want to go on the streets and, 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 and express yourself. And so, in the countries where we have problems with human rights, the most powerful songs are the songs that talk about uh, having an ice cream with a girl and uh, looking at his naked, their naked heart. You know, that's the most powerful. The most powerful song is the song that says, let's go dancing in the, in, in the bar. Because that song gives you this idea of being a free human being in a free world. For this reason, I've just been in May, I've been visiting Iran. Iran, you say. In Tehran, 80 million, no, 40 million people town, big town, incredible town full of young people, 70% of the population is under 30 years old. So it's a, the country of Italy. Well, we are old, you know, it's a country, you know, everybody's young, you see, just young people around. And uh, they, rock is forbidden. Pop music is uh, simply forbidden. You go to the shops and you see records of Iranian classical music, very beautiful. <laughs> but uh, you don't have beat, you don't have rhythm, you don't have... Uh, uh, it's forbidden. You know, there's a beautiful movie 
if you have the chance to see it, uh, it's, uh, it's around the scene right now, it's called uh, uh, the Persian cats. No one knows about uh, Persian cats. Uh, 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 no one knows about Persian cats. Yeah, yeah, Persian cats is it. Persian cats, oh, yeah, it's a beautiful movie. It's about, uh, yeah, uh, no, it, it wasn't, yeah. It's called No One Knows About Persian Cats. And it is a, yeah. I would think it's a long time. <laughs> This movie is, a, it is about uh, uh, underground indie rock band in, in Tehran. And uh, it, it, if you are interested in this kind of issues, you gotta go it because it's a very poetic and uh, powerful movie. And, and I, 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 I should that, add too that it, it's a side of Tehran that you've never seen before. I mean, it takes you down these alleys and into these beautiful homes. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really incredible. And what's happening there? What's happening there is that. Young people, they just, uh, they're not desiring for, you know, they don't want to be American or Italian. They want to be Iranian. Mm. But uh, being Iranian doesn't, uh, doesn't mean that uh, you don't go to, to a bar with your girlfriend, you know, to have a uh, eat together. Uh, and that's what impressed me. These boys and girls, uh, the most uh, uh, I've seen in the, in the metro, in the subway, a lot of young people with, uh, you know, the book to learn English. Mm. Everybody, you know, uh, they want to be, they feel international because uh, Persian culture is an antique culture. It's, a, it's not like a third world country, you know, they feel, they want to be, to be modern at the end. But they have this gap, strong gap with the power of their country, with the political power, the religious power of their country. They're not denying their religion. They're not denying their identity of Persian people, of Iranian people. They just want more freedom of being themselves. And when you're young, you want to, to make the, 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 the things that, they, that the young people do. And they, today, they got this machine, the thermal machine. They got telephone set. And so with this, they become everybody of them, every of them, they become a media, a strong media. Ten years ago, now we knew about the television, about the internet, what happened in the streets in Tehran. If it happened ten years ago, we would have been, I would say, no lo hemos saputo. With the verbs, uh, 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 <laughs> I never know that, you know. Today, we, we, we know that. It's more easy because they have, uh, they have cell phones. And it, also, if the government is uh, banning the internet, uh, closing the sites, doing a lot of things, at the end, they cannot do anything because technology is, uh, is unstoppable. You, can, you cannot do it. So if you have a, a telephone then in the clandestinity, you find like a, a deal with a Turkish company and so on. And at the end, they know they have the videos, they have Lady Gaga videos, you know, <laughs> they, they in their cell phones. And this is, a, you know, you look at, uh, you know, the, 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 the Ayato line, then you look at Lady Gaga, and it's very easy to choose. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, but not, not pronouncing to your, to your identity. As an Iranian guy, you know, as a... Uh, and, and yet, and yet, artists who are real artists in the film, uh, no one knows about Persian cats. Very beautiful that is yeah. fantastic, and it's fantastic music. It's amazing. So what, <laughs> what do you think the Iranian government is afraid of? I mean, what, essentially the question is, why do, yeah, why do governments of, censor music? Of losing control. They're just afraid of losing control. I think uh, control is uh, what they're afraid of losing. The, so let's so take in, uh, because uh, uh, a guy, a free guy, you know, a guy who's free to express himself, uh, it's a, uh, how you say in, uh, in English, it's a pain in the ass <laughs> for, uh, for, for, the, for the power, you know, for the government. It's a, it's a, real, it's a problem. It's a problem for control in a, in a country where they control everything. They control power, they control energy, they control media. They control. I'm talking about Iran. Oh no! <laughs> uh, they, they control lot of They control the market. They control import, export. They control the the, 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 the transit of drug. They control everything. So, uh, so let, let's take let's take an extreme example. Uh, recently in Somalia, this uh, militant group is of uh, Islam uh, banned music on the radio. It's a, no more radio, no, no more music on the radio. Uh, and so here we have this group, Free Muse, which is a, uh, a Danish-based uh, human rights organization that monitors music uh, and music censorship around the world. 
And uh, freedom of expression for musicians, they say, freedom to play music in public as well as in private places, freedom to give concerts, freedom to release CDs. However, there are exceptions, they say. And this is from the European Court of Human Rights um, and a judgment uh, from 1988. There are exceptions. Propaganda for war is always unlawful as a advocacy for national racial religious hatred. States may also limit freedom of expression if it's necessary for a certain number of other reasons, respect for the reputation of others, defamation, protection of national security, public order, or public health and morals. So I think of this edict in Somalia that radio stations stop playing music, and, I, you know, I mean, the heads of all Islamic officials would just say, this uh, protects morality, and we need to develop in our own way, in our own authentic way. What do you say to that? You know, I think that uh, uh, we're not talking about uh, extraterrestrial world, you know? In Italy, it was like that when uh, my father was uh, a young boy. You know, in the national television, uh, you couldn't have a certain kind of song. Uh, so I think it's a question of, you cannot be, you know, judging uh, these situations like uh, from uh, another world. This is our world, it was my world when my father and my mother, they were young, you know? Where uh, in Italy, um, the first belly button that you see in television was a big scandal, you know? Uh, but the, the world is not living everywhere at the same time. Uh, there are countries that, are, that need more time. There are developments, and then you make one step forward, and we, you make two steps back, and then you make three steps forward. It's a long, it's a long way, and the, the wrongest uh, uh, position that you can take uh, is uh, a position of judging from the right uh, part of the world. Uh, this is not a question, because until you do this, until you elevate yourself to the role of the judge from the right part of the world, you don't uh, achieve uh, goals. The right way to achieve goals, I think, is to uh, develop a, uh, a way of uh, to understand how this thing can change. How we how we change things? It changed uh, little by little, with little steps, with a penny ball, and uh, and then with uh, uh, trying to. Um, Okay, you know, there are, there are ways to, there, uh, the best way is always to, I think that uh, all the, it, it, it could be a good reason to make a war, you know, if you think about it. You say, we go there, and we go there because we want to liberate the young people and make them dance on the streets. But if not, you know, we got to get yeah, I would say so, yeah. You know, we got to get it because uh, not all of the, uh, in my opinion, it becomes more a reason to make a war than a reason to liberate. And uh, my suspect is that, is that when we decide to make a war, it's because we want to make a war, not because uh, we, we are taking care of the issue. There are other reasons, mm -hmm. other, other ways to take care of the issue. One is music, it's pressure, pressure, political pressure, asking to our government, don't do deals with, them, with these people. Don't sell weapons to these people. This is the, the, the political way. I believe in the political way. Because I believe in human beings. And if, if we sit together and we talk, I cannot achieve from you maybe that you change the world and you are the president of a nation. I can achieve that you kill less people. I can achieve that you uh, help me in this issue. You know, it's a question of believing in the, the chances of human beings to develop their way of being together or living in the same world. It happened in the past. We are much more better now. Women are voting in the most part in, in, in the, the majority of, of the world. You know, we we reached a lot of goals and we never have to forget how ma how many of these goals we reach. Human rights today, the, the, the declaration of human rights is uh, is written on paper. It's something that exists. Uh, it was not existing before, even also it's the sensation that that kind of uh, thing was right. But now it's written, it's black on, on white, I say. And, uh, and, that's, and that's the thing. And also the declaration, I was telling you before in the car, I think it can be correct. 
can be uh, can be better, you know. Uh, if I think about um, a word in the first article of the Declaration of Human Rights, uh, I said in, I know in Italian, I don't know how many uh, uh, equal. The word equal is uh, today. If I say the word equal, it's not a soft, a, a powerful word. It's not a powerful word. If I say to a young guy equal, we pass uh, through the experience of uh, building uh, in reality this world. And the experience of that was not always positive. Think about communism. Communism. Or think about uh, the homologation of the market. What it creates, you know? So the word equal is no more the, the, the word that gives you, that makes you feel emotion, makes you move, you know? Especially for a young guy, I think. So I will like uh, add to the word equal, the word, the word uh, unique. All human being is created equal and unique, with the same rights and uh, in dignity and rights. You know? Because uh, we are actually not equal. We are not equal at all. I'm very, I am very different from you. Uh, but, but that's good. <laughs> it is very good that we are different. We are. I wish I was more like you. <laughs> You're really cool. I like to respond. You know, we are not that equal. We are unique. Unique and equal in, uh, in, in rights. And, uh, so, uh, 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 why I'm saying that? I'm saying that because I believe that the world is changing. It's changing, always. Always changing. Our relationships are changing. Politics is changing. Um, and the, 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 old, the more old uh, way of approaching problems is weapons. In, uh, in I think there are just more, there, is, there was a big evolution in, uh, in dealing, I think weapons were very good as maybe 300 years ago, you know. 300 years ago, you know. Back then it was just a club, you know, it was pretty easy to make. Yeah. You know. Today it's, it's, it's all stuff. So it sounds like you're very much of a kind of evolutionist in, in, in terms of all this. Do you think, you know, next time you and Bono sit down with a big head of state, are you ready to say, you know, that's Somalia there, they don't let people play music there, it's a bad place, don't give them any more money, don't, I mean, is that the next step? It could be, yes. It could be, yeah, why not? Why not? For sure. But for instance, Somalia with Italy, for example, they have strong relationships. We have strong relationships. Uh, it was the part of Africa where, where we had uh, the empire. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, that in, the, in, the, in that area, you know, so we had uh, strong relations. But will they listen? I mean, will, will the leaders listen? listen? Because there's one thing to go in and say, you know, Africa's got a huge debt, children they, they, are they, going they, to school. They, they have interest in listening. So what we got to do is uh, try to imagine and create the, the interest of them uh, to listen. And if they, have, if, if they are interested, listen to you because they get like something. Uh, maybe maybe we can, we can achieve something. And it, it happened. It happened. With the death cancellation, there were a lot of uh, controversial things, a lot of controversial goals. There were failures, but there were also uh, goals. Uh, serious. You know, the, 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 we, we, you know the millennium goal, no? when we talk about it, the, 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 the millennium goal, uh, is moving year by year a little bit uh, beyond, you know. We were thinking about 2010, you know, now 2010 it was yesterday, you know, so we moved to 2015. But uh, we're not achieving the millennium goal, but we are achieving part of the millennium goal. We are getting closer and closer. Uh, and we don't have to discourage ourselves. Also, if in the nature of an artist, in the nature especially of a pop artist, the spoil, the who's uh, you know, a lot of effects. You know. But uh, in, the, in, in the rest of the pop artists, letting, you know, I, I don't like, I go, you know, it's very easy. Well, because we are used to get everything. To get, uh, can you give me a, a bottle of champagne and you got it up? You know, you know, why, when you go to the president of uh, to the prime minister, it's not like that. Uh, it's different, you know. But it's, uh, it's, it's challenging. It's challenging. 
I think we have an uh, announcement. Uh, in five minutes, we keep talking with Lorenzo, but in five minutes, we open to question and answer, as we always do here again. Uh, what we are ask you is, everybody who wants to ask us a question to Lorenzo, to Lorenzo to just for two lines on these two sides, just one after the other. And be prepared for that. Uh, here we are in Harvard, and uh, questions are quite particular. They have two characteristics. They are short. <laughs> and usually they end with a question mark. <laughs> <laughs> in the meantime, anybody is absolutely free. So uh, there's uh, no control, just two lines here, and we'll give one uh, by, by the other. So feel free to come here to start uh, making the lines if you want to ask a question about human rights <coughs> and music. In the meantime, I just want to ask you my, now my, uh, my, my role is actually to, to, to ask the, not the task force, the title of this was about the sex and faith. So um, I think that what Live Aid did created a sort of new uh, job, probably, is the professional uh, activist musician. Yeah. That made incredible things. Uh, before you, I was thinking when you mentioned that every uh, young person in the world has a mobile phone. Uh, a colleague of you, Peter Gabriel, uh, created what is called Witness. Uh, Witness is an organization actually that pre use, promotes the use of mobile phones to report human rights violations. Okay. An amazing thing. Yeah. Actually, exactly based on, on, on that. But the question is when you deal with policymakers, so you in a way within, not within this group, but you collaborate. So, and we talk about all the things that music can do, the different approaches, but what music cannot do? What are the failures? What is not possible to do? What were the mistakes that have been done according to your view? I don't know about what music cannot do, because uh, music can move uh, people's hearts. So it is range. Or moving people hard, music can do uh, theoretically everything. Uh, but not alone. Not alone. You know, a song is a song. After the song, the song is finished. And the song, uh, the song can do one thing very important. Can create attention. Can, uh, can make the, the people attention focusing in one thing. That's the, the most important thing that music can do in this kind of issue. Music can do the same thing that does in commercial. Um, Coca-Cola, they like to use music, you know, to sell their, uh, their, their, their soft drink or uh, cards. They like to use music. And uh, for the same reason, music has the strength to create attention in, in other kind of products. They are a product like, uh, let's, uh, let, let's think about the human rights as a product. As a brand, music can create uh, a strong attention in human rights as a brand. And uh, if we try to be less poetic than we can, and we deal with it uh, as a brand, we can achieve something. We can achieve uh, success. Uh, when I choose to to get involved in a in an issue, I choose it uh, with the same head, with the same state of mind that I would choose to to make a commercial for a car company. Um, from the car company, I would get maybe money. From this kind of, of, of issue, I, I get another kind of value. That's the sensation of doing something for uh, other people. Something that uh, makes me believe uh, uh, that I'm doing right. You know, money is very important, but it's not everything. And sometimes you get back from your activity also other kind of value. There are the sensation of participating, doing your job, but to do to do your part in building a better society. And so, uh, for me, because uh, I do a job that gives me enough money to live very good for me and my family, for me, doing the other part is very, um, how do you say, satisfying. Satisfying, you know, uh, very satisfying. The one thing you cannot do is exactly this uh, also, the, the, the other phase, uh, that music at the end creates attention, but don't create food, create attention, but don't break the chain of, uh, of, of a jail, create attention, but don't build the houses. Uh, what uh, uh, what uh, Bono say, we made song, uh, and the politician made history, you know? Music don't make history, music make music. Music can uh, uh, simulate. But uh, the music, you, you, you don't, that doesn't create walls, that doesn't create streets, that doesn't create a connection with the internet, you know. Uh, and in this, in this thing, I, 
I, I should say that the English people are very good. You know, in creating, like you, you talk about uh, Peter Gabriel, I know, I know Bono personally, you know, the Jubilee 2000 campaign, all this kind of all summers international, all these kind of campaigns are born in an Anglo Saxon uh, reality, in English reality, because uh, 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 as, as they were as good as building an empire in the, in the past, uh, and uh, they are very good also in using uh, this knowledge to organize themselves in uh, charity projects. In Italy, we are maybe this kind of a monopoly uh, is more in the hand of the church. So it's very it's hard to do uh, not religious, uh, uh, to build a not religious organization. And uh, I don't want to hide myself. I don't know if it's hard for me. I'm not good on that. You know, I'm not a good organizer. I cannot even organize my own thing. You know, so uh, but Peter uh, Gabriel is, uh, is a genius uh, because it's also a very good uh, businessman, so he got the eyes uh, on the counts, on, the, on how costs, uh, how much cost this, you know. Um, but there was a second part of, the, of, of your question. I'm sorry, you know, because the English is not my mother language, or maybe it's English, but uh, <laughs> it's very, you know, I studied at school in English uh, and in the songs, and that's it. <laughs> didn't work a lot of things. We didn't uh, achieve uh, what we asked. We achieve, uh, we achieve the part of what we asked. We, it, it didn't work uh, because uh, uh, these issues uh, created an ambiguity. Uh, I'll tell you very shortly about the ambiguity. The ambiguity is that if a government can sell the debt, but the debt uh, is connected with uh, the... It can sell the debt and move the discancellation to the next law financiaria. It seems like they are uh, investing more money in the politica dello sviluppo e della cooperazione, but instead they are taking the cards. They are, can, can you understand, do you understand taking the cards? Because they are moving with that cancellation to the resource. So it seems like they are giving more resource, but in reality they are giving less resource. So it was uh, an unpredictable accident in the Jubilee 2000 campaign that uh, is not very photogenic, so uh, it's not good, you know, it's not, it's complex uh, and it's quite hard to, 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 to say. But at the same time, with the debt cancellation, there were some goals very strong that we can uh, leader in front of the enthusiasm that created this campaign at the beginning. The, the goals uh, were much lead, uh, smaller than compared to the enthusiasm of the first time. But, uh, and then you know, uh, the other failure, the other problem is that is, uh, is, especially in Italy, I'm talking about my own experience, you know, I'm not a, a, an expert in that, so to, I'm just a testimony, testimony no? Uh, in Italy, the existence of a lot of charity projects, especially connected with the church, connected with Catholic Church, in my opinion, uh, created a sort of laziness in the government's activity because they were like saying, okay, the church is taking care of this. You know, uh, Amnesty International is taking care of this. You believe the thousand is taking care of this. The missionary is doing this. And so at the end, the government tend to be to hide, you know, and they want to talk about it uh, just when there is a, a, a real commercial uh, de development, so a real commercial interest. So they, they go to the poor countries when they are a real interest. They are not the interest of developing the country, but the interest of selling their things, of uh, participating in the, the infrastructure, the sell, uh, not teaching them uh, how to fish, we all with the same thing, you know, but uh, in there taking the, the dishes. And that's the, the other thing. Uh, and so today, we are in a critical moment, I think, as a, it, it is a critical moment. A critical moment that they create a lack of enthusiasm, uh, and uh, we need uh, a big earthquake to get it on. And that's bad, that uh, we need uh, an, uh, 
that we, we need a, an earthquake that kills 200,000 people to, to get involved. Because in Africa there is an earthquake, a human earthquake, every week, you know, even less. That's the problem, you know. Um, Okay. I don't have a microphone. So, hi. Ciao. Sono italiana. Um, I'm not a musician and I'm not a policy maker. I am a physicist. And I think that also scientists have a big responsibility in communicating to the general public and to the government <laughs> and to really make a difference. So my question is very simple. Do you think that there is a possibility for a creative interaction between musicians and scientists to get a stronger message? And I think, for example, of the image of what you said, that you were so struck by the image of the Earth. Um, we have a lot of different images, we have a lot of knowledge, which is beautiful and profound, striking. Um, do you think that uh, this collaboration is possible somehow? Make a difference. It, it is possible. It is possible. Uh, it's always been possible, no? It, um, science uh, uh, and you know technology and music are married uh, since, since the beginning, for instance. And you know that uh, um, the the most uh, 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 deep investment in knowledge uh, in uh, engineering knowledge in history, especially in the past, was in two kinds of tools, weapons and music instruments. Uh, if you read uh, the antique, very antique uh, technology book, uh, they are studying how to build the perfect weapon and how to build the perfect violin. Uh, maybe there's a reason for this, though, because uh, music uh, is, a, is another weapon, it's a weapon. Is a um, anyway, I, I told you before, music has the power of creating focusing attention. And that's the main thing. Focusing attention and concentrating emotion. In one moment, in one place. The moment where you listen to a song and you are there in that moment. And, and you cannot ask more a song, to, a, to a song. Uh, that's, that's the most important thing, I think. Science can do different things uh, much better than this. So, Okay, so um, we've been talking tonight obviously about how music can do a lot of really great things. Um, obviously the counter argument to that is that it could also have negative effects. There's been a lot of backlash in America towards some um, American hip hop and American heavy metal. Um, people say that it incites violence and that sort of thing. I was wondering if you could speak a little to that and um, maybe say something about you as someone in the industry. Would you have any power in that sort of thing? Yeah, I, I understood part of your... Uh, of, of, uh, <laughs> uh, Which part? Yeah, no, the, the general meaning. Okay. Uh, yeah. Tell me about, uh, again, about hip-hop and heavy metal. So, a lot of people, um, a lot of people's reactions to some aspects of hip-hop and some aspects of heavy metal is that it has, some of it has very violent lyrics yeah, and yeah, okay, okay. that sort of thing. And so people think that it might incite people to violence because... Yeah, but, you know, I, I, don't, I don't think so. Uh, you know, I am a musician, so I am totally, I totally disagree with this vision of uh, the approach of music. You know, music... Uh, uh, so I totally disagree. I don't think that... Uh, if, if, we, if we start from this point of view, we... We, we, we don't do anything, you know. Art is always uh, controversial. Uh, good art is always controversial. Uh, when, you know, when art is just comfortable, it's another kind of stuff. Art got to be controversial. And uh, especially hip hop, coming from uh, the top environments, most of the time, uh, they are talking about that. Talking about that. And it's not... Uh, Thinking that hip hop is uh, simulating violence is uh, it's, um, it's a, a very easy uh, way of approaching the problem, the, the, the question. But uh, uh, I don't think so. I, I really, I really don't think so. I, I think that uh, art always 
talk about human beings, always we talk about expression, always talk about the authenticity, always talking about uh, feeling, feeling alive, you know. And so uh, we, we we get to a censorship mood, you know, that uh, is actually what I fight against. Uh, but not because uh, I like the pop when it talks about uh, bad about women or this kind of stuff. I hate the song when it talks bad about women or uh, it uses it, uh, just a kind of language. I personally don't like that, but uh, it doesn't mean that, that uh, I don't uh, <coughs> fight for the existence and the right uh, to the artist to say that, you know, and to say uh, whatever, whatever you want, <coughs> for sure. Ciao Lorenzo, eh, io studio alla Business School e quindi volevo chiederti... Oh yes, yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, so I study at the Business School and actually I wanted to ask you, so in the modern society, uh, companies play a major role in the way that uh, economic development happens in certain countries, for example, money companies in developing countries, or also in the way people consume in developed markets. And do you think that music can play a role in shaping the incentives for companies to act in a more socially responsible way? I think it can. I think uh, it doesn't have to. But uh, it can. You, you cannot ask an artist to do something that uh, uh, he doesn't believe, you know. But uh, music can, can, can be good for that. But uh, um, tonight, talking together, sometimes we have the impression that we are giving too much responsibility of uh, music, uh, and when you can give uh, too much responsibility to something, uh, it means also that you take out the responsibility for, for other things. You know, music uh, has the responsibility in the music. Then there are musicians, and music, musicians can be sensitive, can be, uh, they can have a political uh, feelings, they can have political ideas, uh, and so it's not music that can ask them, it's with musicians is uh, management, uh, is the vision of, of, of musician. And in that sense, yes. But uh, I think that when we give too much responsibility to music, we're not talking more anymore about music. Uh, because what music has to do is just one thing, is to make you feel good, to make you imagine something. So it's that the music does. And uh, in, in this sense, music is always been a promotion of human rights since the beginning. I think that uh, we're talking about yeah, Lady Gaga, no? from, from Giuseppe Verdi to Lady Gaga. You know? Never, uh, it, 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 it's, it, it's, a long, it's a long road, but it's a long oh, road. Yeah. You, you see music, you, and, you, and, you, and you feel alive. That's what you see. Then there are musicians. I am a musician, I got political ideas, and I fight from my corner of the ring. You know? Ciao Lorenzo, um, unfortunately I missed the first part of your speech and I would like to use but I would like to use this uh, as an opportunity for asking you uh, one of my questions. Uh, um, so I think that you have a kind of expectancy while you sing uh, with your music. Maybe you have some hope and you hope to issue some uh, um, some results in uh, people that listen to your music. But the point is that I, wanna, I would like to know how you think about this. Uh, do you see results about this kind of music that you, that, that, that you do? Do people think that, um, do people change? Do people think about the issue that, uh, that, that, that you ask them to think about? And so do you see results? And in case you don't see nowadays, because it's uh, something that you do since you started, I guess, to play music. Um, if you don't see these results, do you think that you can miss your hope and, I don't know, give up and say, I mean, nobody listened to me and yeah. maybe I should do something else, find another job? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sure. It is, uh, I'm always uh, fighting with this feeling. You know? I'm always fighting with this <laughs> um, I don't think about... Uh, uh, I never think about the uh, audience uh, as a sort of monster, you know, that I have to dominate. Uh, I think always about that, about singular person. And uh, when I do music, I never think about the audience. Uh, I think about me 
I think about what I like, I think about my friends, my wife, my daughter, if she likes the song. Uh, that's the, 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 my, my labora laboratory, I used to say laboratory, mm -hmm. my, my office is uh, very small, made of uh, maximum technique, and that's my idea of it. Uh, I, I cannot think about the office, uh, I cannot think about you. Yeah, I if I know you, if I know you, if you're my friend. But uh, uh, it's, it's, it's very important. I don't know what's the effect of the music. I cannot control the effect of the music. I cannot decide which is my audience. Uh, I cannot decide, by, uh, there is one thing I can decide, which is my song. There I can decide, I can decide uh, if to say or not something. But I cannot decide what's going to happen then. Uh, because if I even try to think about it, it's like, you know, it's crazy, you know? And when an artist uh, starts to do that, they become crazy in general. They become like they, you know, they become crazy. Uh, sometimes they, they have that. So, uh, I never think about it. I don't have to think about it. I hope, you know, I hope that music, you know, my, my hope is that music uh, makes you feel better. That, that's the only hope. Uh, it's like if I am a, if I'm, I'm an a restaurant, you know, my hope is that you sit down at the table and you wake up and say, you was good, man. <laughs> <laughs> then that's my, my hope. You know, this, it, it, but I cannot control that. You know, I cannot do my best in the kitchen, but not being in your stomach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hola. Related to what you've said, um, there's something that you can also choose, that it's the causes that you support. And taking into account that like, human rights, the very broad um, issue, and there are many um, causes that you mentioned, the debt, education, health, poverty, peace. If you can choose just one thing, if there's just one cause, one concept for just one cause, what would that cause be? I think that cause uh, would be poverty extreme poverty. <coughs> uh, extreme poverty is that condition, there is not the poverty where uh, you can desire a better life. It's the poverty where you don't even know that there is a better life. It's the poverty when you don't own anything, don't even your time, uh, don't even your time, don't even your anything. There is extreme poverty that is still a big emergency in the world, the biggest emergency in the world. Uh, I think that uh, this is the main, uh, also because this extreme poverty kills nations, kills, uh, uh, make, uh, are you saying intelligent? Right. The possibility of a country to develop itself to, is a big cost also uh, in lives uh, and in uh, development chances. And this is the, the big thing. And that's why I say that. Because uh, extreme poverty can be solved. I don't know if uh, we can bring peace in the world. Uh, maybe not, because there are several commercial and market uh, uh, problems. But uh, the extreme poverty problem can be solved with the uh, action of uh, re-election of, uh, of politics. In poverty, I'm talking about the thing that is killing a lot of children, you know, because they don't even can take care of the disease that we care with a pill in our countries. You know, this kind of stuff. Children that die of, 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 uh, of uh, hunger, you know, that uh, is unique in, in, in certain countries. I think this is, uh, if I have to choose, you know, it's not like in the, in the supermarket. But, uh, so, uh, I do really agree with you that uh, music, arts uh, can move people and heart. So you know really well the actual situation, political and economic situation part in Italy. So do you think that uh, art like music and uh, writer has to take a position against, I mean, to help you to improve the actual situation? And if yes, why are you singer in general in Italy and you didn't take any position about that? Thank you so much. Yeah, uh, I, I think we are not uh, in it. 
Italy, we are not in a, in a condition of, uh, uh, let's say, of an emergency. Uh, we are not yet in a, in, a, in a position of democratic emergency. Uh, I think that in Italy we still have space uh, of uh, freedom of expression. Also, if uh, we, are, we are signals to be one. Uh, but uh, um, what, what I think uh, is that uh, we, it, it's not an easy question, yours, because the Italian situation is not an, an easy situation. Uh, and uh, I think that in the last uh, 15, 20 years, uh, there has been a uh, uh, moving to one sort of uh, monopolistic uh, uh, path. situation I think is not desperate and uh, it's not desperate at all at the end. Uh, there is it is still a country when uh, you have a very good uh, and powerful song uh, the song reaches everybody, you have the change the song reach uh, reaching everybody. What we have in Italy is still uh, a problem of separating uh, <coughs> like uh, important music from uh, popular music, you know? And uh, it's a problem that in America does not, not, for instance, you know? uh, Because in America, the, the, uh, you didn't leave uh, the, the 70s as we did. In the 70s, uh, in Italy, there were, we created a sort of two different ways of music music to entertain and the music to make the people think. And this, this is a very uh, unreal situation. And I always uh, try to be exactly in the, in the frontier between this, uh, this, this uh, two stuff. But actually, today, the wrongest thing you can do in a song is to do a song against the government. You know? For what reason? Because uh, the majority of Italians, they love the uh, And so, it's not, uh, it doesn't work if you have, uh, if you do a song against the government. Because uh, you always seem to be ideologic, you always seem to be weak. What we can do, and that's the real challenge, is to do beautiful songs. So beautiful that the government's I you say, uh, scompare. <laughs> you know, that's the good thing that we can do. What have done Italy in the art in, uh, in the 60s, in the 70s, uh, in the 60s especially, in the 50s, with the neuroadivismo, with the, our best cinema, they've done it so bad. They've survived to the time and give people hope. And this piece of art, they were moving together in a country that were rethinking itself in a beautiful way. They have uh, what we call the self-respect. And self-respect comes also from beautiful songs, comes also from beautiful movies. Because uh, the way we, we describe reality is even much more important than reality itself. And uh, if we have one problem with uh, this government, but I'm talking about this government at the same time, I would talk, you know, the problem is not this government, because the opposition is the contrapunto, the musical contrapunto mm -hmm. to this government, because it doesn't exist. Uh, the problem is that uh, uh, the description of the reality that this government gives is not uh, stimulating desires of people of... Uh, uh, I think so, it's a, it's a personal opinion, eh? it's not a controversial opinion, it's very sincere. Uh, it doesn't talk about uh, and, and the sensation of living in a beautiful world that, uh, where you can take part in the building of this world. And that's the, the, the most amazing thing, you know, of the United States, for instance, the sensation that you can take part of, uh, of building the society. You can take part uh, building yourself, you build the society. Being happy, you make everybody happy. Uh, being beautiful, you make everybody beautiful. Beautiful in art, physical.
content. Uh, and that's the main thing. And to do this, we don't have to say, ah, oh, but it's going bad, but it's going bad. I don't care about that. Really, I don't care about that. I don't even know if it's going to what, what, what I can say, we can say, is to do our best in our job, really. There was uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez who said the one thing that is still on my mind. The real revolution is, is, is doing your best in what you are doing. That's the real revolution. The sensation we have in Italy is that you can achieve success at the minimum range. That's the best sensation. That's the, the, the best communication. And this, okay, so, but you cannot sing this in a song. You cannot do good song. You cannot do uh, uh, music with all your spirit, with all your uh, involvement. This is what I mean. Let's take the last question. Hi. Hi. Um, okay. Let's do the three questions all together. Okay. Let's be short and then we're going to reply to all of them together. Right? Being short is very hard for me. I need to... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, mine kind of uh, branches off of what you were just talking about. Okay. My, <laughs> my question uh, elaborates on what you were just talking about. Okay. Uh, you mentioned earlier that the best songs uh, to fight human rights uh, injustice are ones about ice cream and girlfriends, and and as you just said, making people happy. But I want to know if you think that's enough, because some of the most successful human rights activists through music, like we were talking about earlier, Bob Marley, educated their listeners on the issues, and I I'm, I'm, apologize, I'm not familiar with your music, so I don't know how much of this you do, yeah. but don't you feel that with the amount of, um, the lack of political knowledge among youth of today, that perhaps education might be more important than simply making people want to dance? Yeah, I was, uh, okay. All right, so my, my question, and um, it's great to see you, I've been a huge fan for years. Um, and um, was, uh, regarding education on a slightly different note, I learned Italian listening to your music. Um, and now I teach Italian. And um, they're English listening to your music. <laughs> As a matter of fact, actually, um, my question is simple. Would you be willing to come and speak to my students and listen to their music and maybe even cover it in your concert tomorrow night? Because they used your music and inspiration for their Italian homework assignment. Okay. Would you? Okay. But I, I, tomorrow I have to do it. Maybe, maybe yes. Yes, I, I, I don't know. We, we have to, to, to ask to other people, but uh, I, I don't know. Just at the end, um, what would be a song, one of your songs, you think, as you said, we could bring with us that would focus our attention and concentrate our emotion as a soundtrack for this gathering here. Thank you so much, Joe. Yeah, thank you. I answer you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be um, misunderstood, you know. Uh, not misunderstood, because it's not polite to say misunderstood. My, my teacher was telling me uh, that you don't have to be, you don't have to, uh, did you understand, but I have to, I have to say, well, I, 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 maybe I was not clear. Uh, my, my, what I, I told about uh, music for fun is what uh, to create uh, a paradox. Uh, Bob Marley is uh, the artist I love most in my life. He's uh, the, the, the legend, you know, for me. Uh, what I, I was telling is that it's good music, it's good song, it's good songwriting that makes a difference. And good songwriting can talk about uh, Racisme, or can talk about politics, and can talk about ice cream. It's good songwriting that makes a difference. Uh, and uh, I feel this. Um, then there are countries in the world where there is a problem with human rights, where there is not a problem of uh, political consciousness. There is a problem of freedom. And so there are more important music that represents freedom. They are not talking about freedom, but they represent freedom. And sometimes uh, a song can represent freedom because of its own nature of being light and being uh, glamorous. And, uh, uh, then I do agree that there is a light, lack of consciousness in the political issues in the Western world. You know? I agree with that, but I'm, I'm, I don't know if it is, uh, maybe it is just uh, uh, a, a part of the problem uh, because uh, politics is not giving answer anymore. 
uh, especially the, the Western world, to the young people, the and young people. So we have to think about it more profound, I think, the, the, the question. But I, I would like to ask you to, to, to answer to the first part. Okay. The second part, uh, I'm not too sure. <laughs> you know, because, uh, you know, here you are in the university, you got professors, so nobody and you know, prepare is most of the thing of life. So, uh, but in my job in music, it was so many, a little bit. And, and that's it, you know. And for, don't forget about the Marley charisma. For Marley, songs sung by other artists are more are less powerful. Because for Marley, and the voice, and the body, had a particular way of telling you things. And that's very important. Uh, think about education, you know, you're saying the same thing to different people, saying the same thing, and they got it all the time. It depends. Music is not just this. Uh, because we are in a scientific society, you know, so we think that we can analyze everything. But there is something in some writing, for instance, that is simply connected with mysterious things. Bob Marley is a mysterious phenomenon. Uh, or Felapuz, you know, because it's like, uh, it's like, um, Representing is like the sort of uh, is like the point of crossing of a lot of lines, a lot of historical, biological, uh, racial lines, and it creates this uh, human prototype. That is uh, amazing, you know. I, I could compare him to your uh, to you remember when the first time uh, Obama was uh, showing himself in the scene. What happened? You see this, uh, and there was an anthropological shock. Mm -hmm. Who's this guy? Where is he coming from? Is he black? Is he white? Is he young? What, what, what's this guy? He's a strange, you know? Uh, and it, it was I mean, important, the voice, the way he speeches, the, the way he the way look at the camera, all this kind of stuff are together with uh, the reason why you like him or you don't like him. That's the same thing with the format, with your, my music, with every kind of music, not just format. Uh, maybe you don't agree, but uh, uh, maybe in Italian would be India. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the other thing, to, tomorrow, let's see. Uh, I don't know, actually, because uh, concert for me, I, I'm very grateful for them, with them that they got it today, because concerts for me are a real, uh, how you say, Impegnativi, 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 demanding, demanding. Uh, and so when, in general, when I have, the day I have a concert, I tend to, to not be involved uh, in, uh, in different things because, uh, you know, tomorrow it's an important concert, it's the first time of playing ball, so, you know, it's a uh, good thing. But uh, it could, we can talk about it, okay? But I'm not escaping in another planet. I have to come back to America soon. Thank you, well. And the, other, the song, you want to know the song? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. I really don't know, I really don't know. I really don't know because, uh, you know, asking to a uh, songwriter about this song is like asking to a janitor about this song. You know, it's, uh, it's really hard, you know, to say what's the right song. Maybe, I, I really don't know. Maybe uh, Fango is a song that's talking about that he's not feeling alone. And then that's a song that... Uh, it, that's the sensation that I always felt in my life, you know, of not being alone. Also, maybe because I was the fourth, uh, or the third of a fourth children family, and so I grew up in a sort of uh, uh, noisy and uh, funky society, uh, familiar society, so for the reason. But my sensation in my life uh, was always that uh, there's always somebody you know, protecting me. I feel, I felt that this, always this is the sensation of being protected. And uh, it gave me the, the craziness to do things, to do all this job, you know, the joy to do the job. Because at the end I feel always protected in, in some way. Also today I feel that I feel protected. So I thank you. Thank you very much everybody. Uh, thanks for everybody. Gracias, Yeah, we're very good to the and Andrea and Marco. And uh, why don't you continue the conversation outside where we have a little bit of a Thank you so much.
diciamo, adesso facciamo la parola a Stefano. Allora,